Hey everyone, Mr. K here with another Game Maker video. This time I am covering spawners, or those things that control um, randomly popping enemies or objects into your game. Um, 1080p this time, because I'm actually home recording on my nice good monitor as opposed to the one at work, which is a 1050 monitor. Really annoying. Um, so if you've been upset about the 720 quality, there's your reason. Um, this is something we did earlier in the year, but I want to revisit it because I want to actually have something that you can look at and refer to as opposed to just some written code somewhere. And uh, I'm going to do it a bit differently this time. I'm going to incorporate parent and children objects. Uh, so I can give you a good hard example of exactly, well, another example of how useful parent and children objects can be. Um, at the moment, what I have is just one spawner object that is going to create a bunch of green enemies or meteors or just things that are going to fly across the screen. They start and they spawn off the top and they just come on down. Different speeds, different directions, and they come out at a different clip each time. So they're not, they're not coming out at a consistent pattern. It's basically a lot of randomness everywhere. And so with that in mind, let's go through the code, see what it looks like, and then what we'll do is we'll create a second spawner that takes care of spawning the second enemy so this way if you got you know multiple enemies that you want to come at different times you can use separate ones and luckily it's a very easy step before I forget global game settings a little trick I found out about going over to Windows mine might look a little bit different because I got the pro version the school gave me um, but anyway you should have a Windows tab use synchronization to avoid tearing that's basically vsync which believe it. I think this is VSync. They don't not calling it VSync, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it is. There it is. Um, just popped up. What it does is it syncs the frame rate to your monitor and it will take care of some of the screen tearing that some of you have seen or noticed in your game. Uh, it's really annoying and I don't understand why it's so bad. I've seen it. It's uh, I don't know. There's complicated things behind why it happens and I really don't understand all of it, so I'm not even going to try to explain it. But VSync takes care of most of the screen tearing you're going to see. So, um, anyway, that's that. Um, so I have a parent object that's going to be for the spawner, and I have a one child object for spawner and the spawner for enemy one. And what I'll do is I'll show you what's going on in the parent first, and then show you what's going on in the one child element I have at the moment. So in the parent the parent object, and this is the code that's going to be inherited in all the children, I have just the simple alarm, and in that alarm is a instance create, a with instance create uh, function, I guess, um, which is going to create our enemy and give it speed and direction, and we're also going to reset the alarm. Something you might notice, and I hope you notice, is that everything is done with variables. Everything is done with variables. There are no numbers in here whatsoever. The idea is, is that the children are going to dictate the numbers. So the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, what object actually is spawned, how fast it's going to spawn, what direction, how often. Um, that's all going to be dictated by the children. So leaving these as variables allows us a little bit of um, openness, creativity as far as what the spawn, what the spawning is going to actually, how the spawning is actually going to happen. Okay, um, so there's not much to say here. It's just an alarm, creating the instance, giving a speed and direction. One thing to note is the other thing we need to call since we're doing a with instance create. What we want is the other thing to dictate the spawn, the spawn speed and the spawn direction. With that other thing being the actual spawner itself. So remember when you use this with, you're talking about what you are creating. Other references what created it. Okay, so this refers to the spawner. And since it's other, it's kind of vague, it's almost like a variable in itself. This will refer to any child, sp child object spawner that we use. So it will refer to object spawner enemy 1 when that's calling it, and it will refer to object spawner enemy 2 when we go ahead and create that. So that's what the alarm is going here, and I'm just going to leave this down here for the time being. Try not to be too distracted by it, because we're going to come back to it. So here's my child, and, well, not my child, but, yeah, never mind, child object. 
and it has a create event and in the create event I have a couple things happening here I have the it's setting the spawn object variable which is going to dictate what is going to be spawned so in this case the object is going to be one the green one and it's going to kick my alarm off so I just put it at one so it starts pretty much right away so that's it for there just setting the object and the alarm the initial alarm now I have the alarm being called again so in the parent I have an alarm event and in the child I also have an alarm event and the way it's set up is they're not going to override each other they're actually going to work together so let's show you the child hide this for now this is just what's happening in the child I am dictating the X variable the Y variable the spawning coordinates uh, the speed direction the alarm and then there's this thing down here called event 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 inherited which is going to call the parent everything that's going on with the parents same event so in this case since I have an alarm in my parent all the alarm stuff is gonna come after so you can kind of look at it like this this block of code from the parent is gonna go basically where this is it substitutes in so every time the alarm goes off we're gonna pick an X variable oops we're gonna pick an X variable in this case it's gonna be a random range between zero and the width of the room the Y variable uh, minus 15 so it just spawns just outside of the room uh, one pixel in uh, speeds also a bit random spawn direction is random but in a downward um, direction 225 and 315 and then a spawn alarm and if you haven't noticed me doing this before it's um, this is essentially seconds since I'm multiplying by room speed um, it makes it a little bit easier in my head to figure out exactly how long I want it to be so somewhere between a tenth and a quarter of a second um, the alarm is going to reset so it's declaring all the variables at least all the ones that haven't been called yet which would be the um, object that's been done in the create event and then we call the alarm the rest of the alarm and then we actually go ahead and create it using everything we just um, everything we just call um, everything we just created I gotta use a different word everything we just set and then alarm is activated and then it loops back around new X while the Y stays the same new X new speed new direction new alarm and then create it all over again alarm set do it again so every time this alarm is called all the variables get changed up the objects created and the alarm goes off once more and then just repeats so I'll show this again just so you can get an idea so the X anywhere from 0 to the width of the room all the way across the Y is just above this is these picks these are enemies are 32 by 32 so minus 15 is just above the room uh, speed they're all coming out different direction they're all going in different directions and they're not coming out a consistent clip so this random thing is happening every single time the alarm is called okay all right that takes care of that now let's actually create an another one of these so I can show you the power of parent and child objects so this is how easy this is duplicate and give it a new name object spawner enemy 2 Oh, by the way, if you put a space here, they automatically put in the underscore for you. Very handy. Um, and since I duplicated this, everything is already here that I pretty much need. The parent is already set. I don't need to worry about a sprite. Uh, the create event is here. I just need to tweak this to be enemy 2. And now I need to go and futz with the rest of my variables. So spawn x, we're just going to keep it at room width. And we'll do room width plus 15 so it spawns just off to the right and for this random range mm, you know what let's be a little bit creative room with oh, maybe it's not that creative it's different than what I've been testing it with room width divided by 2 room height divided by 2 so we're going to go right in the middle uh, speed let's make it a little bit faster 10 I don't know 17 spawn direction 0 359 I'll leave you to guess why I didn't put 360 in and we'll have them come out a little bit slower of a clip so 0 0.2 to yeah 0 0.7 and that's it only thing that remains put the object in the room itself 
and run it. So I divided the height and the width by two, which means it should be spawning at the middle of the room, and there they are, coming out right from the middle, random directions, random intervals, and speed. I guess it looks random. Yeah, it's definitely random. So there you have it, your spawners. So parent and child make that a lot easier to deal with. I can just duplicate these endlessly and just tweak the variables and choose the object that I want. So if you have different enemies coming in, if you have different sized meteors, like our meteor game we had earlier in the year, um, power, you can use this for things that are not enemies or obstacles. You can do it for power-ups. You can spawn power-ups randomly in the room. You can do this for procedurally generated rooms if you wanted to, just creating random objects that are going to just litter your level. Um, something like that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Bye.